Hey travelers, we got a treat especial for you today. I'm going to do a head-to-head -head comparison between this fan assembly and a box fan. I'll compare one box fan, two box fans. We'll measure the power, the differential pressure, and the wind speed, which we could calculate the airflow from. A lot of people have commented that this fan assembly is the most overcomplicated, ridiculous thing they've ever seen. It's probably excessively inefficient, doesn't even work, won't flow any air, and it'll burn my house down. Well, <laughs> we can look at the data and see how true this is. We'll do a head-to-head -head comparison between these guys, which everyone seems to love. And apparently they're $5 available at the local store. And then compare it to this guy with its little automated controller and power supplies and complexity. There's plenty of reasons for why I have this the way it is. And well, that doesn't necessarily mean that they're all true, but I do have a video where I talk about this and the reasoning behind it when I first put it in. It's been in for a little while. Maybe some lessons learned over the time. We'll talk about it while we show the data. But first, I think it's helpful to get a lay of the land to see where this is installed, what it's doing. So first, fans. No, seriously, watch this part. Fans don't automatically cool things. They don't cool rooms, they don't cool components. What they do is they pump air. Okay, well, that's what they're made to do. They can pump a lot of things, but they pump air. So they'll take air from one side and they'll put it to the other. If you have a restriction on one side or the other, it's harder for them to do their job. And as a result, they typically will move less air. Some fans are designed to move more air into pressure restrictions than others. Like these, these are made for server environments. And a lot of times there's a lot of components in the way of airflow. And it's the job of these to pull air forcefully across around through these components to ensure air gets pulled through this box with a lot of stuff in it. Something like this isn't made for that. This is made for very little static pressure, as it's called. It's made to take air in from one side in an open room, blow it to the other. It's not really made to pump air through a building. Now, that's not to say it won't do that. Of course it will. However, the efficiency or efficacy of how well it does that is dependent on the blade design, the motor design, the geometry, and things like that. These are optimized for high pressure. These are optimized for no pressure. So that doesn't necessarily mean that this is intrinsically better or that's intrinsically better. It means they're different parts for a different job. These are smaller diameter and intrinsically there are losses associated with that. You can see the hub diameter, the diameter of this motor here, is pretty significant on these fans. However, it's also fairly significant on something like this. Now, as a total volume, this has less hub to blade ratio. But there's also a lot of leakage, a lot of losses around this area because the blades are round and the box is square. And there's not much you could do to seal that unless you do a whole lot of effort to get in there. These are obviously not made for pressure and the tolerances between the tips of the blades and the box aren't very tight because these are basically made to be kicked around and never see a lot of pressure. They're not designed for it. So what that means is if you have a lot of pressure drop, a lot of impedance to the airflow, say like you're pulling the air a significant distance through ductwork, through boxes, louvers, filters, things like box fans are very bad at that. Now, of course they work, but the efficiency, the performance, the airflow you get isn't what they say. If they say 2000 CFM or whatever, you won't get that in practice unless it's perfectly open space at normal sea level, normal pressures. If you have restriction, you'll get less. How much less depends on how much restriction, and we can measure that. We can measure the pressure generated from this. Now, the pressure is a symptom, more or less. It's not the cause. Um, if you have more pressure, it guarantees you have more airflow, because the reason for that is these fans don't create pressure. They create flow. The pressure is caused by the restriction. So if you're taking air from inside this space, which is sealed other than those intakes, and you're pushing this air outside. As you push this air outside, there's less air in here, right? So naturally, there's all this air outside that's at atmospheric pressure, around 14, 15 PSI. It wants to get pushed in, it forces itself in through there. So the bigger the push pressure difference from here to out there, the more air gets pulled in, okay? Now you can make it easier for this air to rush in by putting bigger openings, more gaps, 
less restriction, less stuff in the way, and then the air gets in much easier, right? And it's like the difference between opening the window a crack, opening all the way. Either way, it's open, but when it's open all the way, it's much easier for air to get in. So, if you have a fan assembly like this, this is designed to handle more pressure. However, intrinsically, these fans also take a lot of power. And because of their speed control ability, that may or may not be an issue. You could control the speed of these fans very easily, the PWM signal, which I have connected to this PLC. And the speed also determines the power consumption. So there is a trade-off point where this fan assembly consumes the same amount of power per unit air, per unit airflow as something like this. We just don't necessarily know if it's within a range that's feasible. Solutions like this ideally need to be really engineered for the space. You need to understand how much pressure differential you're going to expect in the building, how much it's going to change over time, how much airflow you need, how much space you have available, all these various metrics. And it is very hard a lot of times to know in advance. So when I did this, it was sort of based off a guesstimate and I had the vast majority of this hardware already. So it, it made a lot of sense to do this. It was very cheap to do. Obviously, I wouldn't recommend anyone do this exact example. It's a bit ridiculous and it would be very expensive, but, um, if I, I already had the hardware used mostly, and while well, these power supplies are common with my mining rigs, I had the breakout boards. Right? Really all I bought was this wire and a few extra fans because I didn't have quite enough, and I figured, well, if I'm gonna do it, let's fill it up. Anyways, these fans are designed to work with static pressure, and I was expecting to have a moderate amount of static pressure because I wanted to have filtration and a lot of air for this volume of intake and exhaust. And the louvers behind here, we can't measure the pressure those cause. I mean, it's kind of hard to do, but it's difficult to measure the pressure that the louvers on the other side impart on these fans. However, the impact is going to happen no matter what. These fans and these fans will face the same pressure on the other side. So we're not measuring the total pressure that these fans are seeing. We're only measuring the pressure difference from outside to in. And if you have higher pressure in this building, what it means is these fans are pulling more air out. They're pulling air out faster to create that pressure. So higher pressure means more airflow. We could guarantee that if you see higher pressure on that meter, that fan that's producing the higher pressure is flowing more air. And on top of that, we could double check with the wind speed. The size of this opening won't change between the tests. So if you have higher velocity air, higher speed air going past the sensor, more air is getting pulled in. And you could estimate the amount of air if you assume that the airflow is even in that area, which it won't be, but it'll be close-ish. And you do some simple math based on the area and the speed. Um, pretty straightforward to do. It doesn't need to be that exact, but it'll probably be plus or minus 10%. It'll give you a decent estimate. And then we'll be able to check airflow of one, airflow of two box fans, airflow of this, and of course, we could very easily measure the power and the differential pressure. So I'll get this set up and we'll see. Here's where we're at. We got the pressure meter in the window. It's a 250 Pascal unit, which is a lot for this type of test, but I have a 61 and that one will peg, so we'll have to do that. We got this one running down into here, both power supplies plugged into this power meter. It is currently reading the idle consumption of both of these, only one is on. The other one's still taking a few watts. The power on this is not right off of here. It's a separate wall wart. Um, I could run it off there. This takes about three watts, so you could add it in if you want, but it's largely not really that important. And we got the readout from our wind speed meter that's on a stick shoved in over here, which I will show you. It's a great setup, got the handy stick, and it's shoved in there. Great, so it's measuring roughly centered in that opening, the wind speed, which we could use to estimate airflow, but either way is a relative comparison, it's more than sufficient. If you have higher wind velocity over there, it's because more air is getting pulled out, causing more air to get pushed in, which is what we want. We want airflow across the components. But of course, we wanna do that efficiently, we wanna do it with less power and the fan assembly will have no bearing over the pressure pressure is just called just by the building things in and around it so if the pressure is the same the airflow is the same 
as long as the pressure outside the building is the same, which it, it effectively is. All right. So we'll start with this fan at its minimum state. Look at the pressure. Yeah, effectively zero. Look at the power. 17 and a half watts or so. This is going to be somewhat inaccurate because of the granularity at these low speeds, but close enough. And I'll start with turning another row on. You could of course configure this however you want, but how I have it configured right now, there's one row that comes on separate, and then two more rows, and then four. So we'll call 2.6 miles an hour, 29 and a half watts, 30 watts. No real pressure as we would expect, very little airflow. At the moment, this is only really useful for very low ambient temperatures or low ambient temperatures also with very little power load inside here. Mm, four miles an hour, takes a little bit for that to ramp up. 52 and three quarter watts. Starting to see a crack of pressure. And you can see the fans running here. So this is half the fans at minimum speed and we're starting to get a little bit of recorded airflow, a little bit of power and a tiny bit of pressure reading. And I will put the remainder on. They're all running at minimum speed now. Yeah, 6.4 we'll call it. Takes a bit for that to stabilize. And 98 watts we'll call it. Definitely starting to see more pressure on that meter as well. Okay, and now we'll start putting the speeds up. One. Look at the power, 140. It goes up a little bit initially when they're ramping up and it comes back down. Eight miles an hour. Of course, they all look the same. Yeah, a little bit more pressure. I will graph this stuff and include it later. 202 watts. 10.1 maybe. Uh, I don't know. A little bit of granularity. I'll pick the lower number. Oh, it's showing 10.3 again. Okay, speed of three, 280 watts, more pressure yet, 12. The response of this fan is going to be very much non-linear, although the speeds are relatively linear, and that's simply because of static pressure. The pressure is going to increase, well, the, the pressure these fans see it is going to increase as the speed increases because the building is going to struggle to get uh, makeup air more and more. As you try to pull more air through the building, it'll get harder and harder. It'll take more and more power and the efficiency will go down. That's true of any fan assembly. That's why you want the biggest openings you could get, the biggest exhaust size you could get. Pretty, very, actually very considerable pressure right now over 50 pascal. Got all that stabilized. A little flutter. well past diminishing returns at this point. Power consumption is through the roof. Airflow is going up, but barely. And you can see the why the pressure here is massive. That's a lot of differential pressure for a building. And I can put this to zero here. You can see that come down. Yeah, and just for fun, I'll crank it and I will open the door so you can see how that changes with the opening. So you can see a lot of pressure there, right? And watch the meter while I open the door. Open, close, open, close. 
Yeah, so the meter's working. That's a lot of pressure. It's this fan shoving so much air out, it's really hard for the air to get pulled in, even though there's two pretty big openings. And there's a lot of air. You can feel a lot of air is getting blasted into here. This is whipping around. Yeah, definitely working. I'll rip it out and we'll compare it to those. Here's a single Lasco box fan. Blocked off the open area, taped it up pretty good. This is the energy efficient model that I got from Home Depot. Not the slightly cheaper one, that's a different part number from Walmart. You can see right through to the louver. You can see the louver does end a little bit before here, but um, these fans actually on the left side are actually slightly offset. And so it ends more or less in the same spot. Similar enough, running at 120 volts, same power meter. Not really a big advantage for either of them that's running 120. These were running 240, but these are actually more efficient on 120 volts until you get like maybe 50, 75 watt loads each. So maybe at 150, 200 watts and up, then it's an advantage, but at low states, it's actually slightly more efficient at 120 volts. So not really a big difference head to head. You can see no airspeed right now. And this pressure meter is way overkill. Um, I'm not sure what we're gonna see on it, but uh, if I change it to a 60 Pascal model, I'm assuming people will claim that I faked the test or something, which I'm sure people will do either way. And wind speed meter, you can see in there, same spot on the stick. I didn't touch this. I didn't touch the pressure meter. I was able to slide this out without touching them. Um, it starts out in high. I'll put it right to low. So there it is on low. You can see 61 watts, 61 and a half watts. Okay, and not much in the way of pressure. Put this to medium. We've got the stabilized 72-ish watts. Mm, 3.3, put it to high. Eighty-three watts, we'll call it. Three point eight, and the gauge is starting to crack off, tiny bit. So I guess we'll get enough. <laughs> Maybe we could speculate, but it'll be pretty inaccurate. I'll rip this out and I'll put two fans in. We'll see. We got the double decker in there. Two of the same models. I have a bunch of these. They were all purchased at the same time. These don't have a lot of use on them. I had these in the window actually like this before, so I actually have a pretty good idea how they perform. But of course, nobody believes me, so we'll show it. And you can see, you can still see through these. They're taped up pretty good. Pressure meter's reading nothing. They're both plugged into this power meter. It's reading nothing. There's the pressure gauge still zeroed. And just for the sake of being thorough, we will verify this guy is still present. If you can see in there, I didn't touch it. None of this stuff was touched between adding the other box fan. I'll put them both on high, medium, low. High, medium, low. Okay, both on low. Give it a second for that. There's our power. Mm, 118, 119, 118. 3.8 miles an hour. You can see a little pressure, a tiny bit. I think I need to change that gauge out, but I think people would complain if I changed it now, so maybe I'll just do both. I'll run it with the original gauge and I'll change the gauge out to a more sensitive one. And we'll run it again. 140 watts. 4.7. Tiny bit more pressure, but barely reading anything. Both on high. 160 watts. 5.3, barely any pressure. Interesting thing is this fan assembly produces less airflow. I got a little over six miles an hour at 100 watts instead of the 160. With my fan, all at low. As slow as this fan goes with all the fans on, more air, considerably less power. This fan's cranked, maxed out, has no overhead. If I need more than this, too bad, right? <laughs> and it takes more power, yeah. I'll swap out the pressure gauge now, just to get a better reading. Same setup as before, two of the fans. However, I changed out the 
pressure meter to a 60 Pascal one to get a little bit better resolution because this wasn't generating enough pressure to really get a reading. Mm, that's still slowing down. There's our power. None of that should change though. I mean, maybe there's some measurement anomalies, but I didn't touch that. This is just about the pressure difference. So we'll get a uh, better idea of the pressure, both on low. Yeah, it's a little better. Call it maybe two Pascals. 118 watts or so. Uh, those numbers should be very similar within measurement error. Eh, three, three and a half. 140 watts, 4.7. Both on high now. 160 watts. And there's our crank pressure. Yeah, maybe six, five and a half, Pascal. On to the data. We have the speed, and I averaged the power best I could, as well as the airspeed. And from that, I used an online calculator to estimate the airflow using the dimensions inside the duct. Some assumptions are made to get these numbers, but the assumptions are the same on both of these. The equipment was in the same place and not touched between them. So it should be extremely repeatable between these two units. And then I doubled it because there's two of these ducts. Um, so here is the estimated airflow approximately for the power. And from that, you could calculate efficiency, well, efficacy, um, airflow per unit power. And of course, over time, it's unit energy. So this is the important number. This is the actual performance metric of the fan. The higher this number is, the more airflow you get for the energy you spend. So you want this number as high as you can. And you can see here the difference. This box fan assembly was most efficient at, well, it had the highest efficacy, interchangeable use terms, but basically meaning similar enough thing. Highest efficacy at two fans and high power, which is a little interesting. I would have figured it would have been much different, but that's probably measurement anomalies because these numbers are kind of so low. There's not a lot of granularity. So yeah, this number may be an outlier. We'll look at the results here. So you can see here, pretty steady all along and a sharp crook there. So it seems unlikely because one box fan on high wasn't better, but this one was. I don't know. That is possible though. Um, and this fan, actually a single box fan had a massive advantage because on that fan array, all of these fans that are disabled have a leakage path around them. They're not sealed as well as this was. So if you claim that like the seal around these is a problem, well, these fans, when they're off at the very low states, you can see at low pressures isn't really a problem because there's a ton of fans that are just sitting there. So yeah, if anything, the box fan had a better seal and had some advantages. So you could see the Y axis on these, the vertical axis is the same on both of these. Um, so we could see here the specific energy consumed for airflow on the box fan versus this fan. Um, normally this fan runs, depends on the load. It could easily run at speed zero in average temperatures. In warmer temperatures, I was running at around two or three. And in very hot days, I would let it go up. It doesn't have much of a gain though. You can see the efficiencies are dropping. There's the airflow. So you can see it is relatively linear, but you start to lose a little bit towards the top end. For the power you put in, you get less and less airflow. And that's simply because the pressures are so significant. We see pressures are, the pressures here really climb. And this is a lot of pressure for a building to have and for a fan to make. You can see these box fans, they did around six Pascals versus 95. So <laughs> massive difference in pressure generated between these two devices. And as a result, you would never run this assembly at full speed, it's ridiculous. You only need that in extreme circumstances. Um, very unlikely I would ever need something like that. The efficiency of this assembly at full speed is, is very poor, but it wasn't made for that. That was the whole point. It was designed around finding the fan with the right profiles for the task. So they run at the speed they need to. There's enough of them in there that are gonna reduce speed to get the performance you need. And you can see that here. Um, you'll get the airflow per watt. This is a lot worse than it used to be because of the uh, baffle box intake assemblies now, and the filter's a little dirty. But this is a reasonable enough test because this is realistic conditions. These are conditions I was running in. And you can see here, we get a peak of 16 CFM or 15 or so CFM per watt delivered. You look at the box fan, pretty steady all the way around seven, eight-ish. Pretty much around eight CFM a watt delivered. And up here, we get a lot more. So the, the point at which we get the same efficiency is speed two. Well, I mean, more like speed three on this fan. The difference is, if you look just at efficiency numbers, 
speed three on this fan is 2100 CFM compared to 1500, right? So we're more equivalent to maybe three box fans at the same efficiency and at the lower speeds, it's way more efficient. And the major factor is it's easy to control the speed on these, uh, a lot of redundancy because of the size. Um, you can fit so many of them. And of course, on top of that, you have way more power available if you need it. So if you choose to use it and you needed it, you have all the airflow ranges available to you. And technically I could throttle below this by disabling even more fans. It's a little higher than I would have expected, but 230 CFM or so when just one row of four fans is on at the lowest speed, which is sort of believable because the pressure is so incredibly low at those types of airflows. The air flows quite freely. Um, and compared to a single fan on low 440. So we get half the airflow, which is actually good because having the ability to reduce the airflow is helpful to be able to control the building relative humidity. And in the event that you don't need the airflow, more flow through the building, all that means is additional wear on the fan, additional wear on the filters, increased maintenance, and of course, increased power consumption. So there's no reason to put air through the building when you don't need to. Um, you can control humidity effectively, relative humidity, with airflow. Uh, and that's what I'm doing here. That's why I need this massive range of airflow, you know, 200 some CFM to 4,000. Um, whereas these box fans don't really deliver that and it's hard to automate. So for me, this is a great solution. I mean, the data seems pretty convincing. I'd never operate at these speeds, so the efficiency drop off there is not really an issue. It wasn't designed for that. Of course, fans also last longer when they're run at lower speeds. Depends on the design and whatnot. But some fans will give you data sheets and they'll give you a good indicator of how they're going to perform in your application if you could estimate your pressure. But I hope this made it abundantly obvious. Pressure matters even in a room like this where you have comparatively pretty large intakes. For a lot of people, that's actually a massive intake. You see a lot of mining rooms with tiny little openings. That's pretty considerable. And even with those big openings, these box fans are really starved because these will, I think these are rated 2,400 CFM or something like that. And in practice, we saw 1,500 for two of them. We should have been seeing four or 5,000. We got 1,500. So yeah, you can't always believe the numbers. You gotta actually do these things for yourself, but the numbers don't really lie when you talk about the actual measurements, although sometimes the manufacturers do. So another thing to keep in mind, a lot of people shop for fans based on the advertised airflow and advertised power. That's a horrible way to do it, it's meaningless. Advertised power is usually sort of accurate, but not always, I wouldn't rely on it. And advertised airflow is literally meaningless. It means absolutely nothing if they don't tell you what pressure that was achieved at. Typically, they sort of fake it. They, they give you an estimated optimistic number at no pressure, which is absolutely worthless because there is pretty much no assembly that has no pressure, except that ultra low flow applications. Like one of these box fans on low, sure, in this room, very, very little airflow and also very, very little pressure, but kind of impractical to run like that. It doesn't, very few people are going to get much benefit out of something like that. So you always got to anticipate you're going to have pressure, you're going to have restrictions, you're going to have drop. In this environment, there's a bit more than most people have because there's louvers out here and the meter didn't measure that. Louvers over there, and of course, filters as well, and these baffle boxes, along with the other restrictions and stuff in the way. All these things cause the air to struggle to get from there to here. And it depends on the pressure you're at too. If you're at a different altitude, you're gonna actually have to have more pressure to get the same airflow because the air pressure outside is lower. So less air, air is gonna be less likely to wanna push into your building when you push it out, right? You're not actually, you're not directly pulling air into the building, you're pulling air out from here. This is pumping air out and the environment you're in pushes the air back in effectively. Um, so if you're at lower pressure, if you're at higher altitude, you'll get even worse performance um, this is done in fairly cool weather too. It'll actually work better in colder temperatures. The fans are going to be more effective um, because the air is denser, it's easier to push. Now, I don't necessarily know how much of an advantage it's going to give to one over the other, probably not much, but these were done at a similar enough time and maybe you could see the temperatures between them. Bit of a doozy there, I know. Unfortunately, a lot of manufacturers don't give you great data, especially things like these box fans. They really don't tell you pressures or air flows at pressures because they're not made for that application. It's not to say they won't work. They're great, they're cheap, they're easy to put in a window and stuff, but the performance of them isn't the best you could do. So yeah, hope that clears a few things up. If you have any further questions, let me know. Maybe I'll answer it if it's interesting enough, but still next time.
Stay hashing.